Hey, welcome to Tim's Final Confessions. I'm Tim Derling. Thanks for tuning in once again. Really appreciate all the great responses my last few episodes have gotten, especially on YouTube. Uh, the Extreme one, the Metallica one, uh, the Queen one, very, very much appreciated. Heading into the Christmas season now, by the time this plays, it uh, might be a little bit late for Christmas shopping, but if you've got classic rock fans on your list, uh, it's, a, it's an album that's been out for a few weeks now, not too awful long. And it's actually an example of something that I don't often buy. I'll try to explain where I'm coming from there for, for what it's worth, as much sense as that might make. Uh, I don't often pick up solo albums or side projects of members of groups that I follow. I just don't. And uh, it, it's I'm probably missing out on some good music, but I've, I've never made it a point to follow what some one in a band does on their own um, not because it wouldn't be good I just for some reason it's just a maybe a touch OCD my mind can only concentrate on so many things at once and there obviously are exceptions to that rule I used to be more like that I used to follow everything that uh, band members did um, and in some cases there are some great albums out there that I would not otherwise have dis uh, discovered uh, Richie Sambor a stranger in this town I maintain 25 years down the road remains an overlooked gem, but I don't have all of his solo albums. I don't have all of Steve Vai's solo albums. And, well, I mean, he's more of a solo artist now anyway, but bringing uh, right up to the present, the album that I'm going to talk about is this. This is Rick Emmett, and he's calling this, this band right now um, R.E.S. 9. The Rick Emmett Solution 9, so R-E-S-9. And Rick Emmett, of course, from Triumph, a band that's been, that hasn't recorded new music in their original trio formation in almost 30 years, since 1987. Rick Emmett went solo in the early 90s and has maintained a solo career since then. Quite a bit of breakup from Triumph. Now, I remember when Rick's first solo album absolutely came out. I tried to get into it because it was Rick Emmett. Uh, like his guitar playing, like his singing huge fan of Triumph, wish they hadn't have broken up. Uh, just stylistically, it was just a little bit off what I personally liked, and the, and the problem is all mine. It's it, I'm not passing judgment on this music, it's just, it was a little bit out of my, I hate to say wheelhouse, it's such an overused expression, it wasn't on my radar, it wasn't likely something to be that I would like. So why am I holding on to this new album that's just come out? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, Rick was very, very smart this time around. I mean, he's, he's a smart guy anyway. I, I love watching his guitar tutorial videos. He just seems like a down-to-earth nice guy. that just happens to be extremely talented. Backstory with Triumph. Um, obviously, it was a very bitter breakup between Rick and the other two members, Gilmore and Mike Levine. Happily, they, they mended fences going on almost 10 years ago now when they reunited to play a couple of shows, one of which was immortalized in the Live the Sweden Rock Festival. And I uh, kind of wish that they would hit the road again. I, I don't necessarily need a new album. I'd buy it. But it would be nice to see. I, I'd like to see them in concert. I never got to see them. Rick, on the other hand, has always stayed busy with various musical projects. Some have in the rock realm and some have not been. Some have been more like jazz, more blues. Uh, just kind of all over the place. Classical guitar. This time around, this band, um, R.E.S. 9, Res 9, some members, uh, long time uh, rock and rollers from Canada will recognize some will not. So, from uh, from left to right here, I'm assuming this is how he's got the label. So Dave Dunlop, Dave Dunlop has played with Rick for uh, years now. As a matter of fact, he was a second guitarist in the live at the Sweden Rock Festival for for Triumph. He kind of played extra rhythm guitar. Paul DeLong. Now this is a name I've not seen in a long, long time. Paul DeLong was Kim Mitchell's drummer way back in the day. Fantastic drummer, just amazing. Of course, that's Rick. And then finally, uh, Steve Skingley, who's a bass player, keyboard player, and background vocals. So you, again, you say, why this? Why now? Why would I pick this up? Well, obviously there are always exceptions. Uh, and, and this is one, and I'll get to that. Three years ago, almost four years ago, there was another exception to the rule when Tom Kiefer from Cinderella put out a solo album, his very first solo album called The Way Life Goes. Cinderella hadn't recorded since 1994. They only did four albums, and I was just glad to have new music out from Tom, and some of the songs on that album could conceivably have been Cinderella songs. So, I just, uh, mostly it's the projects where their bands are in between albums, and they put something out, one member puts something out, or does a pledge music campaign, or something like that. I, I'm just not interested. 
for better or worse, and the problem is all mine. But I did pick this new Rick Emmett album up. And I'll tell you why. He, he was very, very smart in how to do this. And I'm not saying it was calculated that way or if it just happened. But there are some special guests that appear on this album. Some very special guests uh, for people like me. It's got James Labrie from Dream Theater guesting on a couple of songs. Okay, that's cool. Is that what made me decide to buy the album? Nope. Another special guest he has on a couple of songs. Alex Lifeson from Rush. Well, everybody that's seen this show knows what a huge Rush fan I am. Was that what decided to make me buy this? Still wasn't it. It was cool. I wasn't convinced to buy it. No, it was a couple other guests. Neither of which are as well-known individually nowadays as James Labrie or Alex Lifeson would be. But in context of whose album it is, very, very special. I'll tell you about that. Later, first of all, I want to go over the packaging just a little bit. Um, here's the, uh, this is what the, the CD looks like opened up. Some credits. This is on Pro Vogue uh, Music, or Mascot Music. I'm not sure which is the label, which is the distributor, but it's obviously a smaller label. Comes in this sort of digipack. Uh, there's a, an order form for other releases. This is obviously a blues label, and I'm not really much of a blues rock fan. Uh, respect, but uh, just not much of one. So uh, I don't have anything else on this label, and probably won't. I like the uh, the way that the CD itself appears. I really like the way the CD itself appears. It comes in this little package, kind of all on its own, and it's made to look like a record. Of course, I, I like that. Now this has been issued on vinyl. If you're a big vinyl freak and, and get this and really like it, um, yeah, pick it up on vinyl. I'm I'm. I liked it overall more than I thought I would, but don't think I'll be investing in the vinyl. And of course, there's a booklet, and I'm not going to show you too much about the booklet just yet until I go through the guest stars. Uh, track by track, first song here is called Stand Still, uh, very much in the vein of uh, ZZ Top's LaGrange. It's sort of a bluesy shuffle. doesn't exactly set the tone for the album, but does get it off to a kind of a rocking start. And of course, like most rock singers of the era, especially ones like Rick, who sang way, 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 way up in the stratosphere. He's lost a little bit of his high range, but he still sounds good and uh, records songs that are uh, fitting to his um, his vocal range now. The next song was the first one I heard. It was a video called Human Race. A typical up-tempo song that you'd expect Rick to write. In a heavier context, I could s almost see it being a triumph song because they always had really upbeat, positive songs like Fight the Good Fight, Never Surrender, like that. And uh, that one has Alex Lifeson appear on it. It's a very brief appearance. I don't hear much of a solo, and it doesn't particularly sound like Alex, but uh, the idea of Alex and Rick trading looks back and forth is kind of cool. I found myself at the end of that one thinking kind of a missed opportunity, but they make up for it later. Next song is a, almost a ballad called I Sing. This is one that James Labrie from Dream Theater sings on, a James and Rick duet. Mostly, It's mostly Rick, but it sounds it's, it's a good song. Uh, My Cathedral, uh, we're back to sort of a bluesier number here. Again, not something I, you know, if it wasn't an artist that I kind of paid attention to and kind of admired what they did, I probably wouldn't be listening to a song like this so much. Uh, next up, a song called The Ghost of Shadow Town. It's sort of a, a more traditional sounding slow blues, but I, I do kind of like it. Uh, next up, uh, When You Were My Baby and Sweet Tooth, those, those next two songs. Again, more of a blues thing, kind of a playful thing. Um, okay, uh, they don't really do too much for me. Heads Up is the next song, track eight. It sounds like something that Rick would have done in his early solo career. Kind of like Human Race, but I find I don't like it as much. It's, it's okay, um, and, it, and it may grow on me. Rest of My Life is kind of, kind of neat. It's more of an acoustic-based number, almost, um, almost like a hold on type of song, the, one of the Triumph's early hits. Uh, next one might be my favorite musical number on the album, musical, and that'll make sense after. It's called End of the Line. This one features Alex Lifeson and James Labrie. This one's a flat-out rocker. This one's a flat-out heavy Zeppelin groove-oriented song. Lots of soloing from Alex and Rick. You can easily tell the part Alex has these weird effects going on sometimes. And sometimes he just plays straight up cool blues rock licks, and uh, great uh, vocals from Rick Emmett and from James Labrie. James Labrie gets to cut a little bit loose on this one. Uh, it's not progressive in the least. Like I said, it's just a heavy blues rock Zeppelin type of song. Really, really like that one. But 
The last song is uh, the, the carrot, the, the dangling carrot that made me decide to purchase this album. The song is called Grand Parade, and in and of itself, it's sort of a slow blues song. Um, you know, it's okay, but what makes it significant are the musicians that play on it. For the first time since 1987, since Surveillance, Rick Emmett, Gilmore, and Mike Levine playing together on a new track. This is essentially a triumph song, and that's why I bought it. Um, very much like Sammy Hagar's Marching to Mars album that came out in 1997, his first post-Van Halen album, he had the members of Montrose appear on the song Leaving the Warmth of the Womb. So in the context of the Sammy Hagar album, one song is Montrose. I mean, that's there's no other way to say it. Even though there's a couple other musicians on it, it's got Rick, Mike, and Gil on it. Now, I was disappointed. I would have loved to have heard it on a heavier song like End of the Line. I also would have loved to hear trade-off vocals between Rick and Gil, but Gil obviously didn't want to sing. He's really, I mean, Gil's way, way out of the music business as far as performing goes, but he's got Metalworks Studio, so he's very much in the music business. So now I'll show you what's inside the booklet, lyrics and everything, and there's a picture of Alex Lifeson, Rick Emmett, and James Labrie. There's some other pictures in here as well. Uh, of course, the as the Triumph fans go, here we go. That one on the bottom in particular, that's something you never thought you'd see in 2016, I'm sure. That's Mike Levine, Gilmore, and Rick Evett. Triumph 2016, ladies and gentlemen. Is this the start of anything? Probably not. But it's cool. I'm glad they did it. So, a listenable album, and like I said, um, my favorite song on it is not the Triumph song. That was sort of the bait. Um, bait's a that's, a, that's a patty word. But that was sort of the, uh, the inspiration that I, I had to actually purchase the album. And if you're into Rick Sola Career, you probably think it's fantastic overall. I mean, I'm sure by now he's been recording solo longer than he was with Triumph. So it's almost a, probably a footnote to some people if they latched on to some of his later albums. But this is just a, a it's a decent album, well played. Resolution 9, latest Rick Emmett solo album, or he's calling it a project. Um, for my alphabetical purposes, I'm filing it under Rick Emmett. Like I said, a Triumph fan would be well served by buying this. Or if you just like good, uh, well-performed, blues-oriented rock, for a change of pace, this might be just the thing. For my two cents worth on this new album. Thanks for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions.